Right. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Thank you all for coming. I'm David Murphy, I'm the chair of the ordinance. Councilor Ryan O'Donnell is on the ordinance with me, and Councilor Maureen Carney is running a minute late. We're going to get started, and she'll join us uh, as soon as she gets here. So I want to uh, announce that we're doing video recording, audio recording, and taking minutes. So whatever your comments are, they will exist word for word. Um, any public comment before we get started of the general nature? Councilor Adams. Hello, Jesse Adams, Lake Street Florence. Uh, there, there are two rules that I've drafted for consideration by this committee tonight. Uh, one is the, the council rule about remote participation. Uh, this, this, uh, the mayor uh, put out a policy on this issue, as, as he has to by state law, and it only applies to multiple member bodies, and we're not, well, the city council is not a multiple member body. It's, it's excluded from that. So um, that policy, it's, it's basically the same as the mayor's, with, with only one difference. Um, the policy allows for multiple member bodies to have a member participate in executive session remotely. Uh, and if some, if, and if, and if that person participating remotely uh, is in a room or an area where others can hear, then if the council allows that person, the, the non-counselor, um, who, who is in the room with the counselor, participating remotely, um, if the council votes by a majority vote to have them for, for to be okay and stay in the room, then, then they can. I, I just think that, um, I don't think that should be allowed at all. Because, I mean, when we talk about an executive session, is a, can be of a very sensitive nature. So I, I don't think, I, I think that if they, if, they, if they can't certify that nobody can hear, um, then, then they can't participate just in executive session. So that that's the only change that I made. I just think it's a it's an additional safeguard. Um, and and I also and I also added that it'll apply to council subcommittees so that we can have, you know, which is where it's possibly particularly important because mm -hmm. although um, although a, a person remotely participating can't contribute to a quorum, the, the subcommittees are, are so much smaller than the full council meetings that um, it might be helpful to have them participate remotely. So that, those are the only, those are the, there's one addition and one, one slight change I hope that council, uh, this committee will, will adopt that. And uh, the other one is non, this, is, this has to do with councilors participating in, uh, in meetings which they're not members, like for example what I'm doing right now. This, 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 um, this I issue, we realized that, and I was totally incorrect about this rule, we, we realized that um, our practice of inviting counselors to participate at subcommittee meetings, even if they compose a quorum, is okay because it's posted. It's entirely incorrect, we learned. And this rule tends to correct, uh, is, is intended on, is to correct that. The city solicitor added some language in this in this um, rule, so I think that he's okay with it because he, he mm -hmm. recommends some changes. I adopted them, and it's before you, so even though he's not here tonight, um, I think that he would agree that this rule is um, legal. And we, the concern, there's a concern that this rule, you know, there's a concern that there still could be something that could be construed as deliberation. Um, given my rule. Well, if we follow this rule strictly, then we'll be in compliance with the law. If we don't follow it strictly, we're still bound to it because it's the state law. And deliberation is often a gray area, um, but we can't expect council rules to clear up the definition of deliberation or, you know, that's, that's state law. So um, although this rule may, may not clear up any matters of deliberation, well, no rule we create can. And I think that um, because this is this is a, a, a recognition of an illegal past practice, um, I would urge this committee to pass it. Again, if we follow this rule um, strictly, we're in compliance with the open meeting law. If it doesn't pass, we still have to follow the rule. But I think that codification is important because it's an acknowledgement, correction, and prevention of an illegal past practice. So um, I would hope that this committee um, accepts my rules as drafted, and if you want to work up on the agenda, that'd be fine too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, there's, the, the way you submitted them, uh, Alan's comments and the second one, we don't need to amend them. Your, the version you submitted is with his comments, mm -hmm. so we just pass it intact, right? The way it is, mm -hmm. right? 
Uh, this, I don't think I want to move this up because I want Maureen to be here for, for the, this one. But uh, we'll start start our interviews and then we'll bring this one up in more in depth. So thank you. Any other public comment, or are we going to our meeting with candidates? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, we'll get on to our meeting with candidates. So most of you um, are going to be on the elected officials' compensation advisory board in accordance with ordinance subsection 5-5. Um, so. Vicki Von Holmes, you're our. I'm right here. Come on up to the <laughs> podium and introduce yourself and give us your address. Sure. Vicki Von Holmes, 28 Park Street, Florence. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being willing to serve on this uh, kind of more of a task force than a committee because I think we do yeah, this well, once a term and look at them in between terms. Correct. So it's a one you do your job and submit your report and then you're done for, for this version of the committee. So I'll start off uh, with uh, you, Councilor. Do you have any questions? Well, I would just like to, first of all, thank you for, for being willing to step up and, and serve in this way. I think everyone appreciates it very much. Um, I, I think this is a good opportunity, if, if you care, to make any statement of your own. Uh, what what got you inter interested in this and sure. how serve and so on? Well, actually, the mayor asked me if I would be interested <laughs> because of my human resource background. Um, so I've been human resource manager at a local business for the last 10 years. And prior to that, was um, administrator of a number of local nonprofits. So I have a lot of experience with compensation. And it feels great. I, I like the idea that it's short term, but it feels great to be doing something for my community. But <laughs> well, 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 thank you. I mean, I think, yeah, yeah we're, we're not here to, to grill. Uh, this is not like a Senate yeah. committee. We're here to subpoena everybody. Yeah. So, right. but it's just a chance to come in and air your interest in public. And thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not concerned with whom you own stock in no. or <laughs> what you said in a college march uh, many years ago. Uh, Although we have that. <laughs> 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 Someone out there does that, sure, has all of that stuff. Any other questions? Not for me. All right, great. Well, thank you for coming. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Our next is John Fortier. The third. The third. The third. Come on up. Right, yes. I am John Fortier the third. I go by Trey. I am at 105 Turkey Hill Road in Florence. I bought a house since my application. Oh. So, anyway. Um, we appreciate you coming in taxpayer. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so you Happy to help you. anyway. <laughs> we appreciate it. So, um, I actually volunteered to um, join a few committees and the mayor approached me about joining this one and that I accepted my background. I've been in finance pretty much my whole career. Um, accounting background. I currently um, work at a community bank manage about $660 million in assets involved in financial planning, budgeting, things of that nature. Um, have my MBA from UMass, graduated 4.0, um, just then pretty much accounting and finance, always. So, want to so, help out, I'm, I'm back in the community for good now, and I, I want to get, get involved and help out my town. So our, our whopping stipends are not going to appear particularly large. Oh, no, <laughs> it's numbers and numbers. It's all the same here. Uh, questions, um, have you um, have you ever been involved in um, in, in your, your your place of your place of business? Have you been involved in this kind of deliberation um, about salaries? Salaries, things um that sensitive of nature. No, not usually. It's mostly analysis and budgeting, forecasting, projections, things of that nature. Nothing down to the nitty gritty of of something like that. But it sounds like you have a, a wide variety of skills to bring to the table here. So. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thanks Excellent. for coming. Thanks a lot. All right, I think the next one is Dennis. Is Dennis? He's one he's out of the country. Oh, he's out of the country. Oh. So we don't have a long distance phone account. So. <laughs> How about Jennifer? <laughs> hey, is Jennifer? Oh, yeah, come on up. I live at 148 South Street. Um, I've been there for about 10 years. Um, I am active in the community. I volunteer in a lot of different capacities. I was a social worker at the Council on Aging here in uh, Northampton years ago. 
Um, I'm a researcher by training. I have a PhD in gerontology, and I study um, just about anything. But I'm particularly passionate about labor issues, and I'm publishing a new book on Massachusetts State employees. Um, and I'm particularly interested in this position largely because of my interest in labor. Um, I should let you know that I recently have become a special government employee for the FDA since I applied for this position. That's a change. And that's a two-year term. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you for being willing to serve. Any questions? I'm just curious what your book's about specifically. Um, well, I can't really talk about it just yet. Okay, it's coming out in the spring. I'll be happy to give you a copy. <laughs> Pre-publication. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Right. Yeah, thank you for coming. Sure. And uh, Douglas, Douglas, come Hi. right up. Hi, Doug Blue, 86 Oak Street in Florence. I um, I have an MBA. I'm sorry I didn't have a 4 <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a retired supervisor and systems coordinator at Social Security. And actually, they've now called me back to work there, so I'm kind of a part-time employee there. I uh, I served with you, if you recall, mm -hmm. also Murphy on the, Murphy, the uh, Florence, yeah. Florence, Florence Grammar Florence. Uh, Committee. So, mm -hmm. in fact, that's how I got interested in this. Uh, several people suggested there that uh, a couple of the counselors and the mayor suggested that I well, might want to be on this, this committee as well. So, um, and I worked with the Cancer Connection and other agencies in doing uh, salary uh, surveys and, and, and setting benefits and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. You'd be pleased to know they seem to be really happy at the Florence Community Center with their new ownership yeah, and management, yeah. so yeah. that was well done. Yeah. Other questions, right? Um, I don't have any particular questions. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. And Linda. Linda, there you are. Come on. I'm Linda Matson. I live at 17 Florence Road in Florence. Been there 13 years. Um, I'm a retired UMass librarian, also an expert researcher. Um, something I normally don't say this time of year, I'm a former tax examiner. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I'm particularly interested that there be at least one person on the committee with research skills, that benchmarking is a part of this process, mm -hmm. that we look at similar communities and um, as comparison. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Carney has joined us. Hello, sorry. Sorry, Blake. Uh, we'll let you get settled. Ryan, do you have any questions? Um, what, um, what was your interest for, for volunteering for this? I'm retired. Um, I have time now to give back to this community that I love. I do work, since the resume was submitted, I do have a part-time job at Mead Art Museum at Emmons College, but I, I, being no longer working full-time now, I have time to contribute. Oh, well, appreciate your willingness to make that contribution. Do you have any questions for Linda? I know you just got here. No, thank you. No? Thank you Great. for... Thank you for billing, being willing to serve on this committee. Thank you. And the last one on our list is Todd. Hello, Todd Thompson, 76 Massasoit Street. Uh, I served on the Charter Drafting Committee um, a couple of years ago now, I guess, and uh, was the one who sort of raised the whole issue of elected official compensation. And that where it got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was discussed, there was a consensus on the committee that it would be better handled in a special um, advisory group like this. And so I figured since I foisted this on the community, I, I should step up and serve. Um, it was an issue that uh, my background's in finance and um, uh, in our discussions, um, issues of transparency and equity were raised, and so I look forward to addressing those with other people on the, on the board. Right. Questions? Um, when you were contemplating this in the, in the charter, um, did you uh, envision any, any period of time that, that these uh, commissions will, will meet for? I, I think the, the way it's written in the charter, and because you can talk to the lawyers about this, but this would be an ongoing committee that would meet on a regular basis every two years, maybe every ten years, but on a regular basis to address the issue of compensation, which we um, 
I think everyone agreed it's difficult for politicians to address. It's been 20 years since compensation has been changed for council members, <coughs> for example. And a lot of people in the community feel that this needs to be addressed on a more regular basis. Um, so I think this is a sensible approach if we can get people to step up and serve. This is an informational question, but uh, the, the term we're looking at appointing folks to today is? Two years, my understanding. Two years. It's not, it's, right, it's not longer than that. Yeah, it's two years. And uh, David, you had mentioned in your earlier statements that the expectation was we would submit a report. We'd have our meetings, submit a report. And that would be it for the for the term of the council. Is that that was kind of my understanding okay. of it? That we usually do these sort of analyses between terms that would affect the next term of elected people, okay. and you do your research and, and make your report and answer any questions, and then you have completed your task. And right. I, that's my understanding of it, at any rate. Um, and I think that's probably how the mayor described it. You're not signing up for life. You're signing up for the task of doing this one time. And, Warren, do you have any questions? Well, like just a, a comment. I was actually on the last um, formation of an elected officials advisory board, and I think the last time that we, uh, and that was before it was prescribed that any elected official should be on that same board, even though we recused ourselves from the um, from anything that would deal with our own salaries. We we actually at that point raised the mayor's salary, so I think that's at least that's probably eight years ago. But you mentioned 20 years ago. Is that your understanding? My understanding for the council members, the whole issue, there was some, uh, there's been talk about trying to adjust um, or at least examine their salaries. And there, there was, um, at least the council members themselves didn't want to touch it. They oh, didn't I, feel I, that was appropriate. So I think it's been back, going back to the mid-90s. It's 90, been at least, I mean, it's been as long as I can remember. Okay. It could be longer. Been, no, I'm just, yeah, yeah, we, we looked at a lot of numbers. We got some research uh, through Mary and looked, and I know at least goes back to the mid-90s, <coughs> perhaps longer. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and being willing to work. Thank you. Yes, sir. So the only one we didn't see was Dennis. But can I have a motion on the people we did see? A motion to uh, approve. I want to make a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming to see us. And we look forward to your. Can I just ask so, next steps? We just in contact with each other to move forward, or is there some structure? Outside? I think this completes the appointments. You get a minute. Yeah. You, you get a letter from the mayor's office, I believe. No. no. They don't? No. It just goes to council next. Right. And then oh, right, it's going to be approved by the council. Right. The council we'll approved it at our right. next meeting, okay. and then the mayor's office, I think, will contact them once that happens. Okay. okay. This will come up on March 20th at City Council, and assuming they approve it, I'll send you all a letter saying you've been appointed. Correct. All right. And then just, just to clarify, will we be meeting in a public session, or how will, what no, your rules well, will all be? your sessions will have to be public. public. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, you'll have to meet and select the chair and, and post all the post all your meetings, but I think your committee functions through the mayor's office. I believe so. Yeah, so um, when, I think when they when they get your get your appointments letters, you'll probably get some direction from the mayor's office on setting up an initial meeting <laughs> when you when you're going to get together and elect the chair. But all your meetings will be subject to the open meeting law and be documented. Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. To finish up this section. What do you want to do with Dennis? He's out of the country yet. I would like to have a discussion. We invited everyone. We got almost everyone to show up. I believe Mr. Helms is here today. It's been very comprehensive. The background one we need. I would almost be willing to just go on that and pass it along to the others. Do you want to make a recommendation as such? Make a motion and we'll. So I guess I would move that we just approve Mr. Helmsley's with the others, along with the others. Okay, you okay with that? Second. Yeah. Right. All in favor? All Aye. Aye. Okay. So the whole group will go, and that covers all of them. Um, so just some quick housekeeping now that you're here. Approval of minutes. I move to approve the minutes. Oh, the, the twenty. Our last meeting was what the twenty fifth or sixth. February ten and February twenty five. Yeah, February 25th, so moved. the special meeting. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Now, we have a, a request to move up item 11 and item 12. Uh, Councillor Adams spoke to them in public session and wondered if we could do them. Okay, I'm trying to bring those up uh, electronically because my I've got, packet I've was in my... I've got them here. Okay. Um, the first one um, <clears throat> is the rule on mem non attendance um, or, or non members attending committee meetings such as Councillor Adams is doing right now. And uh, then the second one. Um, is on remote participation, and Councillor Adams made a change in that where um, in our rules you can attend the meeting, but if you are going to be attending an executive session and you're not in a private environment, that you can't participate. So that no one, you know, if you're sitting in your living room with other people there and we're discussing something that's part of a um, a um, executive session that you wouldn't be able to participate because you're not in a private setting and people can overhear the discussion. And let me find those for them for you if you don't know. Yeah, I, I can pull it up here. I just have to get to you on Mary's. I can find them for you. Here yes. no? Okay. They're in, uh, I'm sure they're in my packet. Are you talking about the council rules? Yeah, the council rules. Okay, yeah. I can pull them up right here. Yep. These aren't in the council rules, yeah. No. So this is a. These are amendments, like yeah, that uh, Councilor Adams has made. And actually, yeah, I don't know, they're in my they're in my giant packet here, but I'll share them with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, here's the other one. Here's the one that addresses that. This is the one with the executive. But actually, either we can we can address Councillor Adams um, since we don't have a, a quorum present. So yeah. I'd move to uh, recognize. Councillor Adams. Second. <clears throat> so for this, it looks like, um, and the reason I asked is, so for the remote meeting participation, this pretty much mirrors what's what came down from the um, ethics commission, right? Or from uh, remote participation? Yeah. It, remote remote participation mirrors the mayor's policy. Um, which doesn't apply to the council, which is why I want to create a rule. Oh, so okay. it mirrors the mayor's policy with almost, almost exactly, except for the one exception is that um, in the mayor's policy, if someone's participating remotely um, and there are others, other, another person, other people in the room, the city council can take a majority of vote to allow each, more, you know, to allow others hear, hear, hear the conversation. And I thought that we due to the sensitive nature of some of the things we discussed in the executive session, what I did was amend it so that if they can't certify that they're in privacy, they actually won't be able to take part in the executive session remotely. And oh, we'll have to just discontinue participation for executive session. Mm -hmm. If there are others in the room, they can't say, if they say, you know, if the, if the chair, if the council president I says, Councilor, are you, you know, can any other people hear you? And they say, well, yeah, if there's others who can hear me, then we'd have to say, well, sorry, you can't participate. Right, but if they say, no, I'm in a private office. Then they can. Oh, okay, so they just need to also be. Oh. That's the only change. The other change is that it uh, applies to subcommittees. Where would that go? The change? In the rules. It's in there. Do you want to. They don't have rule numbers on them. I suppose we should. Uh... Uh, I, the change I made is to. D under procedures. Oh, okay. Because there's no changes, it just wasn't like that. Okay. All right. So when we, assuming these, and does anybody have objections? You want to make a motion to send these to council? Well, I just like to add, it, I want to add, the changes you 
are after these are in here now, correct? Is that correct? Yes. Oh, okay. There's no, I'm not changing anything because we never had a rule, so it's just that's just the only rules. draft that ever was. Okay. And it's based on the mayor's except for that exception. Yeah. And just for your information, we spent a lot of time last term. The, the rules are basically we're all redone for this session, so they're all new anyway. So we, we if we make a couple changes in them, it's, it's, we've been doing that pretty steadily for the last year mm -hmm. to get ready for this new, new session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are, are we doing these one at a time? Or we, we could do them one at a time, or we could move them together. And all we're going to do is send them to council with a positive recommendation, and we'll do them on the 20th. Well, I move that the remote participation rule change uh, be sent to the council with a positive recommendation. Second. Okay. More discussion on that one? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That one's done. And uh, do you have an issue with the other one, or just one move it separately? No, I, I, I don't have an, I have an issue with it. I just think that, um, I would just note that we still have the larger question of whether we're going to consider concurrent city council committee meetings in order to deal with the problem. If there were one more of you in the audience, then we would have five. We would still have a problem, as you, as you stated, despite this rule, which the rule itself, I think, is very good and guides us. Um, we still have that larger question to deal with. Well, that's a separate matter. It is. It is. And that's outside the scope of this rule. Absolutely. That, that, that's why I, I mentioned Yeah, it's governed, it's governed by separately by the what we do still have to deal with it, I agree. It is, but that was the genesis of this of this rule, I believe. So I no, so. from my perspective, really? from my perspective, it, my, from my perspective, it was just to try to correct the issue of the mistake. This just behavior. clarifies below the threshold behavior, the actual, right? The actual rule again. Right. That's, yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That's it's right. like That's for right. below the threshold. Yeah. Like one, once we hit quorum in the room, then it's a whole different situation. Yeah. Right. So and. Um, The example that Councilor O'Donnell brings up is for if there were another councilor present in the room, we would not be even able to have this conversation right now. We would unless we um, unless we wouldn't be able to back and forth at all. Right, and councilors I mean councilors would actually have less rights than the general public because you can recognize any member of the general public and they can interact with you because of course they could never contribute to a quorum. So mm -hmm. you know that's you know so um, and also, just, uh, Councilor Carney, one of the things I said earlier was that Solicitor Seawald added some language to this, so I believe that he, he's not here today, but he supports, I believe he has no issue with it, because he added uh, some language to it. So, but if this were, if, if this had been uh, posted as a concurrent city council meeting, this rule wouldn't apply? Would not. Right. Okay. Because that would be a separate section of the open meeting law, and we can't make a rule to, you know, that would, you know. Then this rule wouldn't apply. We could, we could, um, <laughs> if, it were, if it were a concurrent city council meeting, for example, in fact, we could invite the councilor to the table and any others that happen to be in the room. Right. I mean, this rule doesn't, right. That, that's right. And it's because this rule doesn't address concurrent yeah. meetings with the full city council. This it's, is, not it's not even intended to. Yeah, this it's is to address the situation. A low quorum. Right. Like the situation we're in. Mm -hmm. But um, does it does it um, prescribe the back and forth that we're having right now? This rule? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, it, well, for one, it's not passed. If it, if it no, I mean, but if it had right, right. Would we have passed? I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it would because the rule says um, I can use me as an example. Say the rule passed. Yeah. I attend the meeting. Not as a member, right. um, I'd sit and participate as a member of the public, um, take advantage of public comment like I did, mm -hmm. and not discuss matters of the quorum, which we're not doing, and not discuss things which are not under. So, I, so I don't think that this precludes this four-member situation, but but um, that could be that could be confusing for some chairs, you know, unless they just really familiarize themselves with the rule. Mm -hmm. But but if this rule is followed strictly, there won't be a problem. Mm -hmm. No, because we we certainly can. Have a back and forth with members of the public if we recognize them. Yeah. But they shall not discuss matters as a quorum. Why is that sentence even relevant? Because um, because we we can, that means we can't deliberate. We can never deliberate as a quorum. Mm -hmm. That's actually outlined uh, that. Oh, that just suggest that that's only that that would only apply if there were a quorum right, present in right, the room. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and I'm sure this will, on the 20th, get more discussion right. from right. everybody. I, I actually, you know, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions and bring to the solicitor. I mean, I wish, I wish you were here. But it does, it, even though it's even though it's a comment that is not doesn't pertain specifically to this rule, it does raise the fact that we can't uh, discuss once there is a quorum present in any subcommittee. Um, it raises the the question of whether many things ought to be referred to committee in the first place if they're uh, uh, if they are of interest to a quorum of members of the council. And probably every issue would be though. Well, and the councilors right. but even we can't discuss them because if they all come to the room, once they come into yeah. the room, then we can't. Mm -hmm. So they can make a public comment. Right, they can make they a can public make a comment. They really have to be strictly, you know, it would have to be strictly kept to that, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Because I can see the occasion where a councillor may come to support constituents that want to make statements about things, and you come with your constituents and make public comment, but couldn't engage in anything that could be considered deliberation. And this language was taken right out of the uh, the, the opinion that Solicitor Seawall gave us on um, that case, the Marlboro case. The Marlboro case, and then he added a little bit of language to it. Mm -hmm. I would, I would just I think this this rule is great because I, I think it's guidance as I said um, it it because it does come out of the opinion it it contains the same gray area that that opinion does and that we still wrestle with um, and that gray area is discussing matters as a quorum and as you said that can be hard to define sometimes if giving your opinion does constitute deliberation. Okay. And um, I mean, I, I can show you where in the Attorney General's regulations where we suggest that. Not in every case, perhaps, but I'm just saying it's, it's still, there's still a gray area here. But, but you, I support like, your rule, it's just. As I was saying before, you, we're discussing matters of quorum, that's the definition of deliberation. We cannot, we're not going to be able to clarify the definition of deliberation. Not at this level, not at the council level, not except only at the state level. So, right. um, so, so the, I mean, this language comes directly from the Attorney General, and this is what the Attorney General allows us to do. So that doesn't mean it's entirely free of gray area, but the gray area is probably what you know what is, is is what the courts determine what the state open meeting law says. Well, if there wasn't gray areas, there wouldn't be as many practitioners in your profession, though, would there? Right. <laughs> You'd be out of job. There would be a lot of people be out of jobs if there were gray areas to be discussed. I mean, I agree that, you know, discussing matters of quorum is deliberation. And deliberation is why the city of Marlboro, you know, made a case. Mm -hmm. Right. Had a case that was at the start of the state level. But, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I just don't see the fact that, that that deliberation can sometimes be a gray area, can, you know, should prevent this rule or, you know, any other rule. Or, I mean, oh, I mean. Yeah, if I was unclear about that, I, I, I meant to preface it by saying I support your rule. No, yeah, but then yeah. the gray area persists, and the gray area is, you know, this this rule seems to say affirmatively, counselors and attendants may state their opinion on matters. So they, they yeah, can. In every, well, they if can. There's a, if there's a quorum, they can as members of the public can. If there's and a that's a that's a mm -hmm. that's a First Amendment thing. Yeah. We can't make a rule that says counselors can't speak. Right. Because we don't, as counselors, we don't give them a first well, amendment. But we can't debate so, the issue. You but that's why, that, right? That, but that's why, that's why, that's why it says that they can speak as members of the public can, because they have the same rights as members of the public. But we can't deliberate a quorum. We don't have that right. So I mean, well, mm -hmm. okay. any other questions for Councilor Adams? So what's your pleasure with the second one? I would move to send that in positive recommendation. Right. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we've got those done. No, no, I won't get them back. Thank you. And we've got some transportation and parking things. So we're glad you're here to represent oh. the Tra Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, ordinance to amend Chapter 16, Subsection 4 6, Claims. Referred by December 5th. Uh, and so we're good with transportation and parking, correct? They discussed it but did not make a recommendation. I think that's what it says. 
Right, at their December 17th meeting, um, Councilor Freeman Daniels read the ordinance. No recommendation or motion was made. Uh, I bring it back to you because this is technically hanging out there. Um, All right. There's no direction about where we should go with this. In other words, there's no other committees to look at it. It's, mm -hmm. it's come here to ordinance, but I mean, technically, you don't actually have a person to recommend it now. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, in transportation, no motion was made, no recommendation was made. You can just let it die, or you can put it forward and bring it to the full council and decide if you want to let it die in full council, or you can. Have you, have you seen this? You, I'm, I'm trying to get up there. I think you want to just take a peek. This was with regards to, I think this came out of the mayor setting rates at the garage while the machine was out of order and people who were aggrieved would have a process by which to. And this came out of the most recent transportation? No, no, the, okay, the right. last term. With, with no recommendation. This was sponsored by Councillor Owen Freeman Daniels, and he brought it to transportation and parking on December 17th. And it came from them with no recommendation. Right. No recommendation, no motion. In other words, it didn't even come from them. Oh, I see. It's, it's not there. It's his alone. Right. But, but it was referred there. It was referred there, but it's not coming to you with any motion or recommendation. Okay, so when it went when it went there after it was referred there, how did it get dealt with at there? Did they do anything with it? No, like I said in my minutes, there's no motion was made, no recommendation was made, no one would. Okay, well, typically we we take it after it's been dealt with by transportation and parking. So should we ask transportation and parking to deal with this so that we can? They chose no. not to. No. Oh, I'll ask because the chair is here. Well, it was before my before my lengthy tenure. So, yeah. Uh, right, but, so it's still sitting there, though. It's not no, sent to me. No, recommended out neutrally. No. Is that correct? I'm sorry? She's saying no. Oh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't passed on without recommendation? Nothing. They just simply didn't act? Correct. See, I think that there needs to be an action for it to come was it, But Was it referred to them at all? Or yeah, it was referred. It was referred to them, and they didn't do anything with it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So they have to do something, either. I have it on the listing that I gave you of ordinances. Ordinances that are floating yeah, around. It's still there. And, and, and so what happened was you met for your last council meeting on the 19th, mm -hmm. yeah. but because they took no action on the 17th, there mm -hmm. was nothing for me to put before the council on the 19th. Right, so it's still there so until carried, they take action. So you carried it forward on the 19th, mm -hmm. even though I had nothing to give you from transportation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you want to do. Well, what I would suggest is because they have not acted on it at all, and it's still in their committee, because it, until, it, until they act on it, it's still in their committee. Until they do something, either send it with no recommendation, with a positive recommendation, or with a negative recommendation, it sits there. So when they choose to act on it, then we'll take, then we'll take it with whatever recommendation and look at that, and then we'll take it, take it there. So I would suggest at your committee, with the understanding that it was never acted upon, you bring it up and then people want to do anything with it, mm -hmm. they have that option since the, since the council chose to keep it alive. The cho council chose to keep it alive. Into the new session. In December they did that. Yeah. yeah. It's got to get carried forward so it doesn't die. So once it, was, once, it was once it was decided that it would stay alive, mm -hmm. it's, it, it remains in whatever committee it was still in. Mm -hmm. In the same way that the vibrant sidewalks oh, okay. re uh, the resolution is in Ed Lou or anything okay. else, it's, you know, they're mm -hmm. where they were, where they were at that time. <coughs> so, okay. so I think that, that we don't deal with it now until the committee deals with it. Is that so? You want to? You can choose. You do whatever you want, but we. I, d I just think that we don't deal with it until you deal with it. That's your preference. Yeah. I don't want to deal with it now until transportation yeah, or parking says something. Well, they don't get it out of Mary's tenure. Yeah. She won't see it again. Right. Well, your meeting next Tuesday, we could put it on there and yeah. explain this whole mess to mm -hmm. the people that are there. And they, but they, a lot of the people who were there will remember it because they were there oh, yeah. when they didn't do anything with it. Right. And so they'll say, well, 
it was referred to us, and because it's referred, because it was referred to your committee, you got to do something. With people it. have to do something. Whether they say yeah. we send yes, it no, with a negative or... recommendation, okay. we don't like it, or neutral, or, or you know whatever, mm -hmm. and then we look at it. There you go. And then you can bring us that information. All right. I'll bring it back. See, okay, so see, this is the difficulty for this position, is that that agenda for the 19th went out before the meeting of the 17th of transportation, so there was no way that I could put on the agenda that this thing was now, you know what I'm saying? It was one of a group of things for you to carry forward, but I couldn't take it off because it had been on that agenda and published that Tuesday, and, just disappear. and then they met that afternoon, yeah. so I couldn't remove yeah. it. Yeah. Right. So it's, it stays yeah. there, though. If they didn't do anything then, right. it just it's, is still piled in their list of to-do to do lists. But technically, they could have, it could have died after they took no action on the 17th. In other words, mm -hmm. it could have not been on the list of things to, to come forward, forward, but I couldn't take it off because it was already published. Mm -hmm. Right, but so, yeah. but we chose, we could, and also the council could have chosen to not carry it forward on the 19th, but we didn't. We chose to carry it forward. Right. And because we chose to carry it forward, it stands still in transmission. Mm -hmm. And the parking. sponsor was actually present on the 19th. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, that's what we did, so that's where it is. So, so I'll put this on for the 18th for next Tuesday. Thank you. Transportation. That's where and the ordinance is parked. The rest of them will, I'm sure, remember it. I'm sure. And maybe dispose of it quickly now that it's back. <laughs> All right. So that's an answer to that one. Um, the next one is amend 31236 parking meter locations and regulations. Referred here on the 16th of the Transportation and Parking Commission recommends with changes. So remember that. Yeah, why don't you tell us what Transportation and Parking recommended with that one? Um, transportation and parking at its last meeting recommended simply a rephrasing of the ordinance that Councillor Freeman Daniels had introduced um, and it's rewritten there. It's just more concise. Um, the original purpose of it was to give the mayor the temporary ability to alter the fee structure if the mayor needed to. Um, and this particular <clears throat> phrasing also contains safeguards so that if this fee structure is altered, it will revert back to original fees after the next city council meeting. And it clarifies the city council can change the fees if they wish. So this is almost a temporary right mm -hmm. to react to a circumstance for a short term until the process can be done? Yeah, it gives some flexibility. And, and I noted that. We don't. We don't want to. We don't want to craft laws in response to the past controversies. We want to. We want to pass good substantive laws. And, um, one example that came up was: well, if we upgrade the machines in one of the municipal lots to allow for credit cards, for example, which is envisioned, there may be a period where we have to alter the fees to accommodate that change, and that this might make that process go smoothly. So. There was one one no, but otherwise the, the parking commission has supported the amendments. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions? Do you so you want to move this with the amendments from tra transportation and parking on February eighteenth? I, I would. Okay. Second. Okay, and that's a second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Parking meter locations are updated. Um, the next is an application. To the planning board from William Grinnell, um, 49 Beacon Street in Florence. And I actually called him today to see if he would be available to be here tonight to, to be interviewed. Um, I know him from business, but also um, he, was a, he was a member of the Capital Improvements Committee. And Capital Improvements, I'm the only counselor on that, but it's basically some department heads and some business professionals who take a look at the mayor's capital plan and merely make recommendations on the capital plan. So we grade them and uh, and then refer them back to the mayor and the mayor and the finance director then pick the ones they want. And he has done that for the last two years at least and has been a very good participant there. Um, I asked him if he was able to come to our next meeting and he's going to be out of the country for the next meeting. 
and he is going to be appointed to the planning board, which is a very active permitting entity. And it would almost be best if we didn't keep him off of that for an extended period of time. Are you comfortable with sending him forward uh, without actually bringing him here? I am. Yeah. Okay. I'll move that we uh, recommend um, William Mr. Grinnell. Mr. Mr. Grinnell. Mm -hmm. So Second. Any, Second. Okay. any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I think it will be a, a good addition to that. Yeah. We were able to get Mr. Burson to come in with short notice, yes. but Mr. Grinnell couldn't make it tonight and uh, we'll be able to make it next month. Um, so now we have a new appointment to the Agricultural Commission. Margaret. No. No? I'm number 14. You're number 14? Oh. Oh. Well, do you mind if, since Linda's here, if we take her, we'll take no, it out of order? So you've been lovely. patiently waiting Thank you through, so all much. through all of this. We should have caught it earlier had you come up. So Linda is going to the CPC as the mayor's appointment to replace Bill Breitbart, who, who has a term that goes until January 17th. So, you know. Do you and want that's us the mayor's to appointment on? Um, uh, representing any particular... Um... The mayor. Okay, so it's yeah. from, okay. Yeah, because the other, the statutory ones come from the committees. Right, And okay. the mayor and has one and we have one. That's right. So, I... that is the mayor's. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Would you like to hear anything from me or... Um, I believe the mayor was interested because uh, the predecessor, Bill Breitbart, was particularly involved in the area of housing, which is one of the, the four areas that the, the committee is charged with. And um, I have actually known Bill since law school, which was quite a number of years ago. Um, and we worked together for, for some time at Half Housing, where I still work. So I have been... Um, engaged in the field of affordable housing for decades now, shall we say. Um, and uh, that was a particular area that Bill was able to, to offer, and so the thought was that I could, I could uh, substitute for his, his wisdom, uh, or try to, on the committee. Mm -hmm. Questions? Um, do, are, you, uh, are you excited or inspired by the uh, changes in state law around the the CPA a couple of years ago, in uh, terms of what we can use it for? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, my, well, I support all four of the areas. Um, my husband has been uh, involved in historic preservation for, for many years. Um, I actively use the recreation areas of the, of the city. Oh, let's see, four points of time. I do it in the open space. Open space. Yeah. Okay, yeah. questions? Um, no, just uh, I want to thank you for being willing to serve. It's a um, very important committee for the city, and I can really appreciate your willingness to step up. I'd like to thank you as well. We're very envious of you because you actually have money to spend. <laughs> <laughs> With well, the council, we were always made aware well, of how little money we had to spend, you know. The school committee's got money to spend, the CPC has money to spend. We have money to spend. You guys can actually accomplish things, which is a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, since in my job, I'm always the supplicant. It will be a nice, uh, for funding, it will be, be on the other uh, side. It will be. It will be a pleasure to be on the other side. Excellent. Yeah. So do we have, have a motion on Linda? Uh, <clears throat> I move to recommend the appointment. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'm you sorry we had to keep you here so long enjoying our process. <laughs> I actually did enjoy it, oddly <laughs> enough. So yeah, Thank you. Oh, good. Well, we're second Monday. We're here anytime. <laughs> Thank you for the offer. You're welcome to join us. I'll keep it in mind. All right. So we took care of Linda. Um, and so back to 10. We're moving right along then. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. And, and, and 13, we've already done all of those. We did those in the council. Good, meeting. good. Yeah. You're, yeah, we're right about, we're on time. Uh, so this is the. Uh, a new appointment to the Agriculture Commission, Mark Gifford, in Locust Street, uh, for the term from uh, the term of John Kelly as Smith Oaks representative, and John Kelly is the principal at Smith Oaks. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so is um. And I don't know. Person connected them with Smith Oaks. 
call, sir? Do you have one? Because I don't uh, have my packet. The application for that one? Do you have anything on the... On, uh, well, she's there representing Smith Boat. Right? Yeah, she's there representing okay. the the Agriculture Commission. Commission. Um, do, 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 and I don't know, given... Okay, she's the vocational director at, at Smith Boat. All right. Yeah. And I don't know, given the fact that this is filling an institutional spot and they basically pick who they want to have right. there, right. from the institution, if you're concerned with bringing her in, or this is one of those committees mm -hmm. where she's supposed to be there and that's the staff person they said. Well, in terms of the institution, I mean, I think it's really important that Smith Boak is uh, represented. represented. I don't, I can't remember if that's by ordinance of the, of the committee, but um, clearly because of all the agricultural land that they manage and because their school mm -hmm. is a vocational mm -hmm. agricultural school. Mm -hmm. So are we comfortable waiving the interview based on the fact that she's employed in the field I and she, the institution is asking her to do it? So we have a motion. I move that we okay. recommend. Second. Uh, second we approve. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, 13, I think we did all those people right at council because they were reappointments. And I think we, yes, we, did the we suspended rules and put all those in. So yep. 13 has been done. So 15, um, this is the one we got the memo on from Wayne. However, you can't vote on it tonight because at council last Thursday, they sent it was it. recommended out to economic also. Did they add them? Oh, okay. Right. Okay, so okay, so that we'll one's off. We'll continue, we'll continue that one to our next meeting. And uh, then 16, uh, amend subsection 174-18 and 174-19. Fee structure for certain permits be simplified. And that didn't go anywhere else but us. Correct. Okay. So let me find I don't that. believe I gave you a copy of Yeah, we have one in here, don't we? I gave it to you at council, but I don't believe it's in the ordinance packet. Okay. And I should, and I kept everything. Here it is right here. Did, it, did everybody... Yeah, I've got it. It's just basically changing some fees. Yeah. And this is recommended from the planning department. Oh, you do? Right. No, I know. Yeah. Let me pass it over. Yeah. Just, uh, well, there's something back to you. See what I'm doing? And there's a memo from Mr. Fiden. No, that's shared cars. Well, it's both, actually. The second is simply yeah. simplified fees. Simplified fees. Could you just read what he says there so that we can... Yeah, this is... If you look at the fee schedule, it looks like significant increases in fees, but this, uh, but in fact, this ordinance does not bring in any net revenues to the city and is simply to simplify the process. Currently, when applicants apply for a permit, they pay a permit fee, plus usually an advertising fee made out to the Gazette, plus for some permits, a reporting fee made out to the Registry of Deeds, plus for most permits, uh, they need to provide stamps to cover the qualified mailings. This change means applicants pay the same amount, but they simply write one check or swipe yeah. one credit card to cover okay. everything. This is uh, part of the equipment to make the process less complicated for the applicants. I move to recommend the, uh, the, change of fee changes. the changes in fees uh, based on the <coughs> rationale from the planning department. Mm -hmm. I, I second, and I would really like to hear um, the director of planning explain this in full council. Mm -hmm. So he'll, yeah, he couldn't make it today, but we'll get him. Yep. All right, any more discussion on this one? Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, is there any new business that we would not have anticipated? No? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. We good with you, Mary? She nods. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you, Thank you all.